Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve, otherwise known as Pin, and today we're going to take a look at the mighty, the venomous, Robber Space Industries Perseus, a ship I very, very nearly bought until my TV blew up and I had to buy a new TV because, you know, I had to be a grown-up, goddammit. Um, this ship is something I really want in my fleet. I will have it one day, just not this day or year, but next year. I will have it. Um, it's an absolute weapon, this thing. And as usual, what we're going to do, there is actually quite a bit of interesting lore behind this ship. So we will start off by diving into a little bit of the lore behind it, why it was built, etc. And then move on to some of the technical aspects of this particular ship. Um, so without further ado, let's start unraveling a small bit of the lore for this particular vessel. Okay, so the RSI Perseus, it was named after a Greek demigod, uh, the demigod of beast slaying, um, monster killing. Uh, the designers took inspiration from sharks, hence why you see it dripping in all of these fins. Um, they wanted it to be aggressive, it's a patrol gunboat, so it would go out and scare everyone to death with those ridiculous size 7 mounted weapons. Um, but it is one of the oldest ships in the fleet, and it was built about 20 years before the Tavaran Wars, I believe. So, there's a lot of history of this ship. It's an old ship, um, but very effective and extremely good looking in my eyes. Um, of course, the idea was that if, if they built a ship that was so formidable, it would stop any sort of aggression before it unfolded, you know. Just a deterrent, basically. It's a deterrent vessel. It would go out, scare the bejesus out of everyone. And that, you know, that would suffice. By that very definition, it's done its job. So not only does it have these ridiculously large size 7 guns, two turrets with two guns each, it also has um, some smaller Gatling guns. Um, and it's very heavily armoured, this ship. It is very heavily armoured, hence why it can only travel at 92 meters per second um, but it doesn't need to be in a rush when you see this thing you're more than likely going to run away um, so it doesn't need to catch anyone you know so it's not the fastest vessel but it is really well armored so I expect this ship will be able to take some serious serious punishment so to give you some idea of how poignant this ship is there was a rebellion in the verse and uh, this ship was dispatched to keep the peace and it showed up and the rebels were immediately silenced because they were like, hell no. Um, you know, and then the rebels sort of like, uh, they come clean and say, yeah, we realised our mistake when you sent one of these Perseuses to us. Um, we're going to play ball now. So, effective, certainly. So production for this ship started in 2520. A decade later, in 2530, there's a private company called Gia. They go out to a planet, they start terraforming it without permission. They then get captured by an alien race. Um, the alien race then releases a hostage, uh, one of the crew, a guy named Chris Baxter. The UPE then deploy a fleet to the area. They go to, the, to a nav point and I'm pretty sure there was Perseus is there as a sort of deterrent to stop these strange new species of alien from thinking of doing anything aggressive. And it was at this point that we begin negotiations with the race, the Shions. Um, and this is sort of how the humans and the Shion begin their long, tedious, cold war. They're a very suspicious race, the Shions. Um, don't trust anybody, these guys. So the Perseus was actually very important um, in the peacekeeping role. Uh, and it served with excellence in the Tavaran Wars. Um, so it's definitely an old hand, this ship. Very old hand indeed, but proven in many respects. And then gradually, over time, the Perseus fell out of favour. Um, production was reduced in favour of the new, more powerful Idris Dynamics Idris that we're all familiar with. Um, so it started gradually getting phased out and then there was fewer and fewer of these Perseuses knocking around. So in 2860, RSI had completely toned down and phased out their production of the Robert Space Industries Perseus to make favour for the Idris. But during this time period, something quite important happened, and that was the invasion of the Vandals. So 
So in the year 2946, um, the UEE has declared war. All and any ships are deployed to the Vandal front. Um, intelligence is suggesting that they are going to attack the Oberon system. One of the Perses, uh, Perseuses is dispatched to the front line and just annihilates two Vandal destroyers, which are four times the size of the Perseus. Um, so it performed excellently to kill two destroyers of that size. Um, Admiral Bishop was so impressed with the performance of this particular ship that he ordered and got the council to effectively ask RSI to put this ship back into production, modernize it and get it back on the front because he was overwhelmed with the performance of this ship. And so he should have been because it is an absolute beast of a ship, absolute weapon. Um, so that, my friends, was a brief look into the lore of the Robert Space Industries Perseus. And I always find that stuff fascinating. Um, you know, so it's, it's combat proven, it's an old hand. So it might be slow, it might be old, but my god can she handle herself, you know, very heavily armoured, certainly got plenty of firepower, six man crew, which is nice, um, but I like the sort of heritage that this ship um, has with it, you know, it's wise, it's seen a few things in its time. Um, I just love the look of this ship, I really do, it's really cool, um, so gutted I couldn't get one, but you know, life. Um, so what we'll do now is try and have a look at the hollow viewer to get um, get some nice 3D imaging. Um, we can have a look at the uh, the particular model. Um, so like as previously mentioned, um, the designers took inspiration from sharks, which I thought was... Um, kind of bizarre, but I see it with all the fins and things like that poking out all over the place. So here we have another turret with the two size 7 cannons located on the underside of the ship. Um, but as I look at this ship, it reminds me very distinctly of these new stealth destroyers that we have today, you know, especially the bow of this ship. The front of the ship is very reminiscent of that. Um, but it is a big old ship. Um, actually, no, it's not a big old ship, because do you know what? It's 100 metres long and 50 metres wide, 21 metres tall, I believe. So it's actually, in the grand scheme of things, it's not actually that big a ship, but it can definitely punch well above its weight. Um, so you can see, like, the nose and the bridge area of this ship, for me, has uh, similarities between that of a modern-day destroyer that you see today um that's the vibe i get from but i like the look of this thing it's it's mean you know built with purpose built with deterrent in mind built with if you start we're gonna have a problem and i am a problem you do not wish to have that's the vibe i get from this ship and as we look around the back um it's got that kind of four-engined conny rsi vibe to it you know uh, we have another turret here with the two Gatlings. Um, I'm not too sure how effective... Um, they're auto turrets, right? But I'm not too sure how this particular turret is going to be all that useful. Because um, it's sort of surrounded by these four Mahusive engines. Um, how is that GNU going to shoot down incoming missiles? Or even, I mean, fighters and things like that. You have another one on the top, um, which has obviously a much better view. But this bottom one, I think, could be a bit of a blind spot. Also, huge weakness. Unless you get a fighter or a missile tail sitting you, I can't really see this turret being um, particularly effective. Maybe they could move it higher up, but then the underside of this ship would be completely exposed. So I don't know how that will play out. Um, this one is perfectly situated. I can't see too much of an issue um i mean that will get a full view maybe around 360 of this ship um the gun depression for that turret won't be brilliant it won't be able to point down at all so it literally has to face the way it's facing then we have these sort of 
antenna, I want to say. Maybe, I'm not sure what they are. Um, sticking out at the back, but they're pretty cool. I like that touch. But everything's sort of very sharp edges, you know, very poignant, very mean looking. It's a great looking ship. It's a great looking ship. Um, just very sharp edges everywhere you go. I would not like to run into one. Can you imagine running into one of these if you if you're a pirate? You bump into one of these. I think it's probably time to run. I think the only safety net you know you have is you can definitely outrun this ship. Um, maybe if there's a group of fighters um, attacking the rear would probably be the sensible thing because we know that that turret isn't going to be. Well, we don't know. It is my theory and pure conjecture that that turret will not be particularly brilliant. Um, at the rear, so I can see that being a huge weak point for this ship. Um, so gutted I didn't get one. Guys, did you get one? If you've got one, um, I'm jealous. Did you pick one one, one up at IAE? Hmm, did you? Did you beat me to it? Because kind of jealous if you did. Let me know in the comments what you think of this ship, why you bought it, um, did you get it cheap? You know, I'm interested. I do read all the comments. I do try to reply to most of them. Um, yeah, so give me your thoughts on this ship because I am well and truly mesmerized by it and especially sold by the heritage of this ship. I think it's the lore is fascinating. Um, lovely ship to own. So if you've got one, like I said, I'm very jealous. Put it in the comments. Um, rub it in my face. I won't mind. I can take it. Um, okay, so... That's the Hollow Viewer. Let's move on now to uh, the brochure, which, um, not the brochure, sorry, what they have on the website. Correction, my bad. Um, so, here we go. Manual turrets, maximum artillery, internally dubbed subcapsulators during the first tours of duty, four massive size seven cannons spell big trouble for big ships. Um, that goes without saying. They are rather large. Then we have frontline defense, remote turrets. Four bow mounted ballistic cannons can be fully automated or remotely controlled, keeping incoming ordnance at bay. So, point defense, right? Um, again, we'll see how that rear turret plays out. Um, then we have heavy ordnance. Torpedoes, a user friendly, military inspired launch bay, packs a stop pile up. Of up to 20 size 5 torpedoes 20 size 5 torpedoes crazy stow your payload cargo we've expanded the cargo hold of the original Perseus to, uh, to accommodate varied payloads and even vehicles up to and including an RSI rover so we've got a little bit of cargo now we'll move on to sort of the uh, blueprint of, of the ship. So we start on the Orlop deck uh, with the cargo bay entrance, a dock, docking collar located uh, opposite that. And then we have at the back the lower tur turret access. And for some reason, I'm losing my ability to use speech to communicate. Um, moving on to the gun deck, we have upper turret access. Right at the front of the vessel. Fast upper turret access means you're always poised to attack when the action heats up. Okay. Then we have the torpedo bay. A military style launch bay provides total control and security for your crew. Nice. Sounds good. We like torpedoes. Who doesn't? Um, it's weird how the ship sort of split in half, isn't it? Into two separate areas with the cargo in the middle. I think that would probably be a weak point, you know, maybe. Could snap in half, like the Titanic or something. Crew quarters. Comfortable onboard accommodations for up to five human crew. I like how they put human, as if... No vandals in here, please. If you're a Banu, get out. This is for humans only. Jeez. Um, that's located on the starboard side of the ship, very top deck. So three decks, the ship. I'm so gutted I didn't get one. Mess hall. Military style galley to keep your crew well nourished and motivated. It's very true. Very true. 
When soldiers don't eat, they get pissed. Trust me. They, they feed your troops all the time, no matter what. Otherwise, there will be hell to pay. A hungry soldier is not a happy soldier. Captain's quarters. Private habitation facilities for your commanding officer. Um, right at the back of the ship. Well out of the way. Nice and peaceful. Unless you include the, you know, the roar of the engines. But otherwise left well alone. So that's nice. Moving on to the bridge deck. Um, we have the bridge, obviously. Uh, right at the front of the ship. Above, ab above and behind the turrets, I think. In desperate times escape pods in desperate times serious measures are sometimes called for the Perseus escape pods offer a convenient and discreet last resort so we are, we do have the ability to run away bravely which is extremely important because as you guys know we always run away bravely on this channel engineering unfettered access to the ship's core components lets you stay in control even when the situation is critical so that's all very nice now that's sort of going to wrap up my video on the RSI Perseus. I love this ship. Um, what you see on screen now is the brochure that I've tripped, climbed. I've adjusted the images so that if you wanted to read through it, you can um, read the text yourself. If you wanted to get this ship, I believe if you're a concierge member, you'll still be able to pick it up. Um, so if you wanted to know more without having to download the PDF, um, here is the brochure for you guys. Like I said, I've trimmed the important parts out. I have tweaked the contrast um, so that the text was readable. I hope it is. Um, so if you wanted one, as much as I do, um, you'll have all the information that you need here. Um, so thank you very much for watching, guys. I just wanted to say on a personal note, the Star Citizen community is amazing. I've never come across such a friendly, informative group of players for any game ever, especially the background I came from, where everyone was super toxic. Um, I just wanted to say, you guys are amazing, the channel is growing so ridiculously quick um, since I've been making Star Citizen content. I think this is like my 6th, maybe 7th Star Citizen video. Um, my Banu Merchantman video was, well, it's doing excellent um, and I've managed to secure one, so thank you to John McDonald, which helped me realize my dream of owning that ship if you haven't seen that video i will put a link up now but otherwise guys i hope you enjoyed today's video and i will have more star citizen content en route to your location very soon thank you very much guys cheers